This is my land, and it ain't anybody else's. Hey there, folks. This is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. You see the cows back here behind me, and you saw the thumbnail to this video, and I wanted to really talk to you guys about what happened. Freedom, tools, and trucks, right? So that's kind of our motto here on the Stony Ridge Farm channel. However, I felt my freedoms threatened just the other day, and this is what happened. I'll tell you guys exactly what happened. You see the picture of law enforcement in the driveway. That law enforcement officer was not here for a problem with someone else. That law enforcement officer was here to see me, to see if I had done something wrong because I got reported to the county. I'm gonna tell you guys all about this. I, it, it was super concerning to me and more so hurtful than it was angering. At first, my initial reaction was to be angry about this, but it really just simply hurt my feelings. I'm a veteran of the United States Air Force. I try to do everything right. I try to be smart. I try to be sharp. And I had the cops called on me. Thanks so much for joining me here today on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Typically, I'm wearing my sunglasses, but I'm off the sunglasses today to have a serious talk with you guys so that you understand what the heck has gone on. So, the other day, uh, first of all, this in no way is a slight upon the wonderful people that work for my county. It's in no way a slight against law enforcement. I'm a former member of law enforcement. I'm also a former member of the United States Air Force. I'm a farm owner. This is a first generation farm that we're building from scratch here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. But I am here as a representative of, of freedom to you guys. And I wanna discuss freedom with you. And I wanna discuss doing the right thing and I also want to discuss what happened and why this happened. So in case you guys don't know, we just put up a 50 by 112 foot shop. We call it the mega shop. It's potentially going to be a barn dominium home. We are not going to move into that barn dominium home for a long time, whether we move into it or not, whether we use it for a cabin or a recreational spot, that should be our business. I want you guys to post comments on this. I want you to please tell me what you think. So, about a week ago, I went out to my local county, and you're watching this on Thanksgiving Day, so thank you guys. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, Thanksgiving 2023. About a week ago, I went to my local county office because I needed a septic tank for my farm building, for my farm shop building, and that septic tank was to service a farm office and potentially a barn dominium home at some point. Now, I do have the right and I do have the freedom to build the inside out in my shop building to have a finished area where I can sleep, where I can occupy. And I also have the right currently as an agricultural building to have an agricultural farm office in there and to have a bathroom and a mop closet and stuff like that. So that all being said, the building is inspected. We have power in the building currently. Everything's good to go. Everything's lined up appropriately. Once this building went up, and that building went up in June of last year, the first thing that I did was contact my local tax office. I reached out to them. I said, here's what I got. I just put up a 50 by 112. I need to send you photos of it inside and out. I need to send you all the information about this building, what I paid for it, every single thing, full transparency, not hiding anything, just wanted to do the right thing and be honest and pay my taxes like a good citizen. So I sent all that paperwork in, and then I got my tax bill a little bit later on this year. And the way it works is you're taxed in North Carolina for your land and for your buildings and for your automobiles and for basically anything like a trailer or anything like that. I understand this. I live here in North Carolina and I'm happy to pay my fair share. Totally happy, okay? I'm also happy to go follow the law and I went over to the county building, first of all, to get a permit for my septic system. And I told them I wanted this septic system sized appropriately for a four bedroom home. Now, why would I do that? Well, let's think about this. I think I just told you guys why I would do that. So this is going to potentially have a barn dominium home in it. So part shop and part home or recreation area or a place where we do Christmas with the family. I'm not sure exactly what the heck we're gonna do with it, but I wanted it sized appropriately and I do have the right and the freedom to do that. So, 
that seemed to confuse the permitting office and I spoke with some people in the permitting office. While I was there, I went on over to the tax office because I wanted to talk to them because I did not see this 50 by 112 building on my tax bill. So I went in there and I rung the bell and I talked to the tax people. And again, this is in no way a slight upon these guys. They were all super friendly. They were all super nice and they're just doing their job. However, just doing their job still, I felt that my liberty was infringed upon. And I'll talk to you about that as we go on. So please stick around to the end here. So I went in and I talked to the tax person, uh, whoever was at the desk, they sent someone up from the back. I said, guys, I sent you an email about this building because we're gated here. They can't come in and out without an appointment. You can't come in and out of my house without a warrant, period, point blank. I believe in freedom and I believe in privacy and I believe in the freedom to do what I want to do with my land within reason as long as it doesn't infringe upon the rights of anyone else and as long as it is within the bounds of the law, right? That's what every responsible citizen does. So I went in and I told him, hey, something's wrong with my tax bill. It, my building that I sent you guys information on is not on the tax bill. So they went back and they dug through my file and they found the pictures that I sent and they found the email that I sent and the person that was there that received that email was no longer at the county and they put the building in, I think, as a uh, 15 foot wide by 112 foot long building, which makes no sense. They had all the figures, they had all the paperwork. I get it, and mistakes do happen. And that's why I was there, so that I could hopefully correct this mistake so that I got billed properly, so I didn't get a fine next year, or so that I didn't get billed for back taxes. I wanted to make sure that everything is right because I'm a law-abiding citizen. And I'm of the opinion that if you do something wrong, or if you're cheating at something, or if you're trying to get away with something, you will eventually always be caught. That is my opinion. That's my opinion of the world. If you're a bad person, if you're doing bad things, you will eventually reap what you sow. Okay? So I went up to the county and I, I talked to them and I gave them the right specs on the building. They said, oh, cool. Do you have electricity in that building? Yes. Yes, I have electricity in that building. They came and inspected it. I can't get the power turned on without an inspection. And I think you guys have to call the power company to turn it on. Okay. That's good. That's cool. So the next thing you know, uh, I get a phone call the next morning from the zoning and planning person and I explained exactly what I was trying to do. Nicest people you'd ever meet in your life. I actually went over to the county building and I sat and I talked with these people because they were super nice. They were great. And I wanted to put names to faces because I think we're so impersonal nowadays in the world. And I, I just wanted to go in, shake hands, meet them, let them know I'm a real person that I care and that I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be sharp and I'm going to do a bang up job and I'm going to do it right. And I'm not going to infringe upon anybody else's right. And I'm going to pay my fair share. <sighs> so following that conversation, I think that conversation was at 9 a.m. in the morning on the phone. About 2 p.m. I arrived back to my farm. I went to the gym, I go to the gym every day. I try to anyway, try to keep my body in good shape. Went to the gym, came back. About 2, 2.30 p.m. I see a sheriff's deputy car at my gate down there. And I know this car. This is a code enforcement car, okay? So the code enforcement officer, nicest guy you'd ever meet, huge fan of the channel, great dude. Why am I doing everything right? Because I'm gonna get caught if I don't because the code enforcement <laughs> folks, follow the channel, okay? I gotta do it right. I have to do it right or I'm gonna get caught. So all I did was try and do the right thing, the best possible thing. So I buzzed him in the gate and he came up here and he said, hey, Josh, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great, man. It's good to see you. Um, I, uh, what's going on? What, wh why are you here? He's like, well, I got a call. I got a complaint. You got a call, you got a complaint? And I, the steam started radiating from my ears. I will tell you that I said this to the zoning and planning officer, and this is what, why the steam was rolling out of my ears. This is before I met him in person. I said, respectfully, sir, I will do everything within the bounds of the law, but I do have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is my land, and it ain't anybody else's. This is my place and I reserve the right to do what I want to do within the bounds of the law on my property. And he agreed, okay? He kind of chuckled a little bit, 
But that's what I that's what I serve for. I serve for freedom, and that's what I believe in. And I believe in freedom, freedom, tools, and trucks, like the shirt says. Okay. So I'm talking to the code enforcement officer. He said, "Yep, you got called in because of the electrical permit." I said, "The electrical permit? Well, how would I have power in this building if I didn't have an electrical permit?" He said, "I don't know." I said, "Well." What are we going to do? Do you want to go up there and take a look at it? No, he didn't, didn't need to go take a look at it. He just said, I have to investigate everything that I get called in. And I understand this. So let's talk about duties of the county and what I really understand. And this, again, that's why I'm saying this is in no way a slight upon the hardworking people that work for my county. And I want to pay my fair share and I want to do what's right. So it's the duty of your local tax department to report anything that they see that's been done that potentially was not inspected appropriately. It is their duty. If you have a shed out here that's above a certain size, then you have to get a permit to put that shed in, whether it's a carport building, whether it's a garage or whatever it is. As an agricultural operation here, that permit process is null and void. So in other words, I can build an agricultural building to whatever spec that I want that agricultural building to be. I just simply have to get an electrical permit. And if I do a septic system, I have to get a septic permit. All that being said, the code enforcement officer showed up here. A simple phone call could have stopped all this, it seems like to me. And I was really hurt. First steam came out of my ears. I can't believe that I did the right thing. I tried to do the right thing and I got punished for it. I just don't understand that. So here's my, my spiel to you guys. Here's what I want you to leave a comment about, to please share with me. Has anything like this ever happened to you? All this went by the wayside. I spoke to the code enforcement officer, told him, of course I had a permit. Of course I'm doing everything right. He said, I know you. I know you, Josh, and I know you're going to do everything right. I know the kind of man that you are, and I know you're going to do everything like you're supposed to, like you're going to do it right. That being said, I know it was the duty of the tax person to call it in because they suspected there could have been some wrongdoing. I know it was their duty and I respect them for calling that in. I know it was the code enforcement officer's duty to show up here and investigate. I know it was zoning and planning's duty to call me and to try and figure out what it was that I was trying to do so that we are zoned appropriately and so that I'm doing things within the bounds of the law. But what I don't understand is why is it anybody else's business if I'm not harming someone else? And I want your guys' opinion on this. I'm really worried that we're becoming overregulated as a society, as a country, as a, as a county. I don't know. I don't think so. I live in a very, very wonderful place. And I don't think that we're being overregulated until something like this happens. And it really opens my eyes. And I want you guys to share whether your county or whether your state has these same requirements, okay? I can't build a house from lumber that I mill off anyone else's place other than mine. So if I want to build my own home with my sawmill, the state law in North Carolina requires that every stick of lumber, that rough cut lumber that I build my home with has to come off of the property that it's on in order for me to live there. Why is that? I think this is guided by the insurance companies. I think this is guided by liability issues. And I think it's guided by people who have done the wrong thing for decades and decades, if not centuries. And I'll tell you, we live in moonshine country, okay? So living in moonshine country, the law in, in a lot of cases isn't very respected. I respect the law. I respect the law enforcement officers. I respect anyone and everyone that respects me, that deserves respect. Sometimes you can try your very best to do everything right and it still falls back in your lap that you have to prove that you're right. And that just doesn't seem like it just it just blows my mind i guess that that's i want you guys again to share your thoughts what does your county do do you think it's anybody else's business whether you put a septic tank in or not is it anybody else's business um 
whether you build something on your own property, as long as it doesn't infringe on someone else. And maybe I'm overly sensitive. I don't know, you guys can tell me. But tell me, in your county, in your state, I know folks like up in Connecticut, there are no laws governing this. They can build whatever they want to. Uh, in places like Wyoming and Colorado and different counties, various counties, uh, there's no permitting process for any of this. So let me know. Let me know how it goes in your neck of the woods and let me know if you think things are becoming completely overregulated to the point of ludicrousy to make things absolutely unaffordable for the common man. I understand everyone did their duty, but I also understand that, that I was like, my feelings were hurt that that someone that just didn't know me uh, called that in without, without just trusting me, you know? We live in a world of distrust, and that's, that's a horrible thing. We live in a world of cheating, lying, and distrust. And that's, that's just wrong. It's just wrong. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time on Stony Ridge. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here in